Hello and welcome to a special look at Returnal from House Market. My name is Mikal and today with us we have the game director, Harry Kruger. Hey everyone, great to be here. As well as the narrative director, Gregory Loudon. Hey, great to be here as well. So here we're seeing Celine crash landing onto Atropos and starting her first loop. Specifically, we're using footage from a couple of different run-throughs, so there will be some edits through this playthrough. But um, how does it differ from every single run, Harry? What are we seeing here for the first time? Yeah, so every time that you exit the initial crash landing room, uh, you will immediately be confronted with uh, a fairly freshly generated uh, level, right? So we've designed Returnal to be consistently uh, fresh and surprising for players, and every run is designed to be unique and provide memorable player stories. But some of the factors, and some of the modules, if you will, uh, might get familiar in a way, so there are some handcrafted environments that are being recycled, right? Yeah, for sure. So each of these individual levels or areas has been handcrafted so we can achieve the desired mood and quality of lighting and uh, just get it balanced to perfection. Uh, however, how these rooms are interconnected is completely randomized in each run. And even after you familiarize yourself with some of these environments, they will always be populated with unfamiliar content. So we can see some of that unfamiliar content here. Uh, the first enemies coming at you, some quick action. Uh, Greg, uh, how do you feel about these enemies? Are they going to be tough to battle or...? Yeah, so here are the Kerberons. They're definitely, if you let them get close, uh, they can take you out and they also shoot out uh, their own projectiles to give some of that housemark bullet hell flare. But yeah, they're tough. I wouldn't stick around too long with them. And here you have some sort of a ghost of another Selene. Does that activate something or...? So basically what you see here is a projection and this is actually another player who's played Returnal. And uh, at this point you can either choose to scavenge to get a quick gain or avenge. And if you avenge, uh, get ready for what you're about to see. Is that an elite or is it a boss fight or...? Correct, it's like a stronger hostile that you need to take down. In this case it's the Kerberon we saw before, but this one's even stronger and malformed. I wouldn't jump in and try to take this out this early in a cycle, but let's let's see how it goes. Clearly that risk did not pay off. Right on, so Celine died now for the first time. Starting back at the same crash landing hub, uh, but with the same pistol as you had before. There's something looming on the left hand here. Yeah, so this is our mysterious device called the Phonos. And what happens here is, as you play the game, you accumulate this permanent currency called Ether. This is something that persists across multiple sessions of the game. Uh, when you start each run, you are able to deposit this Ether into this device and accumulate progression towards unlocking new items. So this is one out of the multiple ways that we are unlocking more content for players the more they play the game. And I saw you picked up some sort of a malignant key here as well. Is that for specific doors? Yeah, so keys are used for both doors and for our treasure chests. The malignant ones do carry a bit of that risk and reward again. Uh, in that particular case, it was picked up without triggering any malfunctions. Right. So that was a successful, that was a gamble that paid off. Now 
Am I assuming right that these are some sort of art pieces from previous civilizations? So what you're seeing here are Xeno archives. So these is essentially, in Returnal, we cover the story of Selene, why she comes to Atropos, and uh, what she's trying to achieve. And she's not alone here. There's also been another civilization. And these Xeno archives tell you their story. And these are largely visual storytelling. So it's something that you need to piece together. And I suppose finding a lot of loot from crates is very central to how you play the game. Seems like we have some sort of a malfunction being activated now. Harry, how, how does this work? Yeah, so now you've got a specific malfunction which in this case triggers a corruption of the map system. So you can see there's a lot of artifacts now on the screen making it hard to discern at a glance where the exits are which can, of course, be quite an obstacle in a game that's exploration-heavy like Returnal. We do have the menu here, and you do have the weapons that you just discovered, and you can always do a deep dive there to get more narrative uh, backstory. Now, I do like the style of the menu, sort of uh, uh, old CRT screen with the visual distortions and everything. For our tech in general, we were inspired by this kind of uh, retro-futuristic aesthetic. So how the future was imagined, you know, 20, 30 years ago. You can see the bottom right-hand corner here as well. The mini-map is being scrambled as well. So that gives you some incentive to get rid of that malfunction. Yeah, and these uh, are completely randomized, by the way. So the malfunction that you will get and also the condition that will be required to repair that malfunction are completely randomly chosen. There's hundreds of permutations there as well. What is this? This is a like a hidden room? Uh, Celine dropped into a treasure room here. Uh, this is just one out of many different possibilities for what can happen here. Currently, it, fi it seems like we had a, a choice of a fabricator to pick between two very valuable items. However, sometimes you might get unlucky and you might drop into a hellish encounter with another elite enemy, for instance. So this is, again, one of the many ways we're trying to keep the runs uh, surprising for players. Right, so there's a lot of different types of um, challenges or, or surprises you might find in these hidden rooms. Yeah, definitely. We want to keep players on their toes and we want the game to be surprising you. I see this action going on and there's uh, oh she's being grabbed by this uh, tentacles from above but she's also using this sort of a blade weapon so there's a melee weapon that you can use I'm guessing that's a unlockable skill with the blade correct yes so that's one of the many permanent uh, progression abilities that Celine can unlock in the game uh, it does give you more strategic uh, possibilities in combat and also grants access to new rewards and new areas that were previously inaccessible. Here we can see the portal to the next biome, but before that we have to find the anathema key. Yeah, anathema. So that means uh, damning or curse. This is the shop area, uh, so here you can use your obelites to buy different things. Uh, Greg, can you jump in and tell us a bit more about the options we have? Yeah, so uh, basically you can use the uh, ancient civilization's technology to fabricate items. So it can be things like consumables, which are single-use items. There's also extra pedestals which can give you uh, a health increase to increase your max health. And there's also a, a device there that helps interact with the social aspect of the game. So you get to uh, contribute as a community to certain common goals there. And the shops in general seem to be sort of maybe a little bit of this calm in the uh, heat of the storm where you can just kind of concentrate on how do you want to upgrade your character for this specific run. Yeah, that's something that I'm glad to begin to show here and more of an extended look, you can begin to see the flow of Returnal, that it kind of ebbs and flows between the housemark sort of explosive action 
but also has these more quiet, exploratory moments. Yeah, I could see some sort of a red formation about to be uh, spawned into the world. Yeah, so every time that you play through these uh, environments, they will be populated with uh, some unique combinations of enemies. And the difficulty, of course, will vary, uh, just to keep things surprising. In this particular case, there was a lockdown triggered when you entered the room. And there's a central challenge in the middle where there is a slowly spawning uh, large enemy, uh, while separate waves of enemies are continuously spawning uh, on the sides. So this is just one out of many examples of how we keep the, the combat encounters fresh. The only way to proceed now is to eliminate all of the enemies and the lockdown lifted. Right now we're collecting an item that seems to be a key of sorts to traverse from one biome to another. You actually have to get the quote-unquote boss key, and this key will let you uh, eventually enter a um, boss fight. But um, it seems to be that there are these high-level goals that you um, encounter, and in this case the Anathema Vault, if I'm pronouncing that correct, is the the goal for the first level. Harry, I have to say that the atmosphere you have here is quite epic with the searchlights and everything coming at you. Um, what has been the inspiration behind this uh, sort of a deep and dark uh, atmosphere? Yeah, thanks. Um, I think uh, the dark sci-fi, of course, has been one of our biggest inspirations. And uh, cosmic horror or Lovecraftian horror, I guess, has informed a lot of our aesthetic decisions and also some of the more philosophical themes we explore in our narrative as well. So here we can see Celine using that anathema key. The strange energy source is beyond this. It might be tied to White Shadow. Something scary is forming up. Guessing that's the boss. Uh, Harry, can you jump in and tell us a bit more about this encounter? This is uh, this is called Friki. So this is just uh, again we've been relying quite a bit on uh, Greek mythology for a lot of our narrative themes, and this is just one uh, cosmic manifestation uh, that plays a role in the story, as you will encounter later as well. And our bosses are designed, of course, to be this culmination of uh, you know epic battle. There's really majestic creatures that really give you a lot of uh, bullet hell and spectacle. So really excited about these encounters and uh, looking forward to seeing how players will respond to these as well. exciting action there. I really wonder how it ended up being. But I suppose we'll make our way to the next biome, uh, the Crimson Wastes. Here we can see Celine going through a portal and uh, quite quickly the SSD is able to maneuver us over to the other side. 
Greg, do you want to jump in here and tell us a bit more about this environment? Sure. So, Selene has just arrived in the Crimson Wastes. This features different hostiles, a different story to uncover, and of course, there's a different boss to fight as well. You can see here, it has a very different visual style, and each biome is intended to provide a different challenge, and also a different feeling. It also does seem a bit more open worldish. Yes, so it is a lot more open experience. If the overgrown ruins is claustrophobic, this is more open and expansive. Yeah, so as Greg was saying, I think each biome has been envisioned to have its own uh, unique story, of course, and its own role and also to be very different uh, from each other. So each biome should provide its own very unique flavor of gameplay and encounters. And even the level generation, the, the roguelike elements manifest differently in each biome as well. So while the overgrown ruins uh, are a bit more maze-like, uh, kind of foresty, uh, here there is clearly a more open kind of approach to constructing our level at the beginning. And there is clearly some ascension uh, journey that the players will always need to traverse to reach the top of the mountain here. So each biome offers its own unique flavor. And there seems to be a bit more of these aerial enemies and uh, also that bullet hell wave pattern that you see. I see Celine here taking on some enemies and just wondering if she's having a bit of a tough time. Um, not saying that everything is going wrong, but it just seems a bit more intimidating again. Um, is she geared up well or is her level up to par? Yeah, I think it's uh, it, it's looking a bit tight. Perhaps here Celine didn't invest that much into increasing the max HP in the um, overgrown ruins. And I think the proficiency level is maybe a couple of levels lower. So it's five, it's it's manageable. But normally if you had invested more time to increase this to like seven or eight, your chances of survival would be a bit higher here. Maybe some more time should have been spent because clearly that run did not pay off. But <laughs> then again, that's a, that's a big part of the game. And, uh, you know, respawning at the beginning actually does give you new story and narrative beats as well so thankfully we did beat the boss here in overgrown ruin so we can actually make our way back to the crimson wastes without beating that boss again oh cool we encountered the house greg would you like to share a bit of info about this man sure yeah so the house is used in returnal for us to kind of explore uh Celine as a character more and give you more meaning into the story of returnal you actually experience these in first person, which allows us to provide you with a greater sense of intimacy and connection to Selene. Uh, but we won't show you that on this playthrough, so you'll have to play it in the game ahead. I just love the way the environment and those little fireflies and the fog interacts. Um, must say you guys created a pretty immersive environment to be in. And the tentacles, just the tentacles are something so hectic to look at every time you see them. Yeah, those have been really fun to work on. Uh, aside from being a pretty cool showcase of our VFX tech, uh, I think they can also look quite quite intimidating as well, and they also help with the gameplay uh, communication too. So when an attack is charging up, you can see the tentacles also flailing and charging up the energy too. Here we seem to have another ghost 
I wonder how this is going to manifest. Uh, previously, we saw that elite. Oh. So this is some sort of a Selene being brought back to life. Yeah, this is an infected scout. It can be quite a challenge, and you can also see that its attack caused a malfunction. So, once again, uh, we try to turn the tables on you with Returnal. Just when you think you know what's coming, we like to provide a bit of twist and variation there as well. Very interesting. So you're using other players' playthroughs in a surprising way. So the Crimson Waste Portal is now open again because we unlocked it on a previous run. So you can choose directly to go back to that next biome as well. And as Harry said, I would recommend that you should try to build yourself up. Every new biome you go to increases the challenge and the, uh, the skill requirements and also deepens your understanding of the story. But still, it is worth building yourself up in the overgrown ruins and proceeding forward each time you play in, from my perspective. Well, that's why you also have some of these upgrades as you enter the new biome, giving you a little leg up. Um, here we can see some sort of yellow force shield. I think that's it's a bit new. Yeah, this is another element in our, our progression that clearly you don't have the means to overcome it yet. And we'll leave that up for players to discover. Well, coming back to the Crimson Waste here, clearly it's a similar setting, but there's some new things to discover. Uh, like you mentioned, the level does change upon every entry. Some of the pesky flying monsters here again. these waves of, of lasers still coming at you even though the enemy's dead still trying to you know take you down from the from the other side from beyond the grave but it's it's all a part of that bullet hell sort of design philosophy um, keeping your character in movement uh, making sure you maneuver through all the obstacles, never get too uh, too hung up on the situation. So here we have some weapons at proficiency level five. You can see the uh, different weapon options you have available, and there are a couple different uh, weapon stereotypes. Yeah, so we have ten weapons total. Uh, all of these have their own unique archetypes and unique baseline behaviors. However, you can also upgrade these uh, in each session to these unique modifiers we're calling traits. 
This leads to some really surprising combinations that can completely change the behaviors of uh, the weapons and force you to adapt to entirely new playstyles and strategies. You can see here at the top left corner, we have these two malfunctions detected. Are there only two at a given time? Yeah, so you can have uh, two active at any time. Uh, so the negative effects and the conditions to repair these are completely randomly chosen. Uh, upon getting a third malfunction, you will get what we call a cascade failure. So in that case, a random item from your inventory is actually broken. And you do, you receive a little bit of damage as well. So the stakes get higher as higher as you uh, accumulate more of these malfunctions. So you need to proceed with caution. Seekers, so clearly an upgrade to a weapon that we got here from that chest. Yeah, that particular upgrade uh, increases your damage to enemies that already have low health, so it's more of a finishing uh, kind of helper in a way for the enemies. But there's uh, yeah many different types of upgrades, and it's impossible to discover everything in any single session. Encountered armored fauna. Shell seems highly durable. Well, I suppose that enemy was a bit too much for Celine. But yet again, she starts the whole session again at the crash landing site. But here we have it, another run of uh, Returnal is up ahead of us, and we'll let the players experience it for themselves. Thank you so much, Harry. Thank you so much, Greg, for being a part of this. Uh, deeper look into Returnal, out April 30th on PS5. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy Returnal when it comes out on April 30th. Yeah, thanks for watching, everyone.